My next patron question is from Niall, who wanted to know what movies I think should be added to one of the most important organizations for film preservation in the world. I'm sure as a film fanatic you're familiar with the National Film Registry, which includes 25 films each year that are considered culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Which films do you feel deserve to be in the registry if they haven't already? That's an excellent question. For those unfamiliar, the National Film Registry is part of the United States Library of Congress and seeks to preserve films that are vital to the culture and technique of filmmaking. To be included in the NFR, a movie has to be American produced and at least 10 years old. I actually had trouble coming up with titles because they've done such a fantastic job, but I did think of some potential candidates. Both Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back are in the National Film Registry, but Return of the Jedi has not gotten a place yet. In addition to providing the conclusion of the original trilogy, the film continued the series tradition of creating innovative new special effects that still impact blockbuster filmmaking. It provided audiences with a rousing finale that enchanted them even as they left the theater. For something with a much lower budget, I want to nominate Clerks. Using only his place of work and a $27,000 budget, Kevin Smith was able to give people a peek into the day of a convenience store employee. Clerks was one of a number of independent films in the 90s that showed how anyone can make a movie using the resources at their disposal, and also shocked viewers with the character's filthy language and the attitudes of that generation. There are ten animated features in the National Film Registry, including the hybrid film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, so I'm going to suggest a few of these. The Nightmare Before Christmas was an innovative film in stop-motion animation, and has certainly become one of the most beloved holiday films of all time. Which holiday? That's up to the viewer to decide. But that people are still debating whether it's a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie is a credit to how much it stuck with people. The combined imaginations of Henry Selleck and Tim Burton resulted in something whose images are still recognized by many today. Fritz the Cat is most infamous for being the first X-rated animated film. However, Ralph Bakshi did not just want to break American animation out of its family-friendly perceptions. He also sought to depict the counterculture of the time, and by using animated cats, birds, and pigs, was able to get away with a lot. Short subjects are also eligible for inclusion in the National Film Registry, and one I want to mention is the first Fleischer Brothers Superman cartoon. The Fleischer studio was able to bring the popular superhero to screen without losing the impact he had on readers. Cartoon even began to influence the comic book and eventually the live action movies and animated series that followed several years later. I think Ed Wood deserves to be included, how it showed another side to filmmaking, mainly that can do spirit. Rather than depicting Ed Wood's life in a depressing way, Tim Burton was instead more interested in showing his optimism and drive to fulfill his dream come what may. I think it's an inspiring message and shows that regardless of the final product, Anyone making a movie just wants to tell stories, even with everything working against them. Speaking of B-movie filmmakers, Roger Corman's Little Shop of Horrors probably fits the requirements to make it in. Corman is famous among filmmakers for his resourcefulness, and Little Shop is a perfect example of that, as he shot the film in only two days, using the sets and actors he had, and still managed to create a memorable picture that became a staple of late-night television with its offbeat sense of humor and strange plot. A pair of enthusiastic songwriters even managed to turn it into a highly successful and beloved stage musical. In fact, I think Frank Oz's film adaptation of said musical also deserves mention. Little Shop of Horrors gave the movie musical the bounce it needed in the 80s, and also used groundbreaking visual effects to bring a man-eating plan to life. Anyway, those are just some picks I thought to include. The National Film Registry usually announces new entries every December, so we'll see if any of these are inducted in two months. Now let me know which movies you think should be added, and thank you for your question, Niall.